Next, the woman who chronicled her own death in pictures and texts on her mobile phone after doctors failed to treat her for meningitis. Medical staff at Milton Keynes Hospital believed that Joe Dowling's illness was a side effect of her cystic fibrosis, but 12 hours later, the 25-year-old was dead. At her inquest, the coroner said a lack of communication contributed to her death. It's another blow for a hospital already under scrutiny over its maternity services. Hannah Pettifer reports. Joe Dowling's GP was in no doubt she had meningitis. He sent her to Milton Keynes Hospital with a letter outlining his fears. On admission, she received the correct treatment, but then crucially, things started to go wrong. Doctors misdiagnosed her condition, believing she was suffering from an infection caused by her cystic fibrosis. From her bed, she sent increasingly desperate texts and photos. We was led to believe by these doctors that it was something, it was something else and not, not what it actually was. So, we, not to say that you weren't worried, but you wasn't worried for her life. She thought, you know, plans were made for the next day, which unfortunately didn't happen. Joe took pictures of the rash slowly spreading across her body, yet doctors still refused to believe that she was by now fighting for her life. As Joe's life ebbed away, her texts tell a heartbreaking story. At 15.55, Joe texted her friend Jess saying, I've been blue-lighted to A&E, could have meningitis. At 21.42, Joe texted Jess again, the rash is getting worse. At 21.43, Joe texted her mum, Dad got angry with the doctors, Dad cried in front of me. Just after midnight, Joe stopped answering her texts. By 5.20 in the morning, she was dead. It's very upsetting and it makes you feel very angry and upset with people that you believe were going to be looking after your daughter and basically didn't. At the inquest into Joe's death, the coroner delivered a narrative verdict, saying she died from meningococcal septicemia and cystic fibrosis. He highlighted a breakdown in communication, which led to lost opportunities to give further treatment. The Trust has apologised to Joe's family and friends. It's also conducted an internal investigation. Recommendations are already being implemented. Hannah Pettifer, Anglia News. Well, it's 11 minutes past six. Stay with us for lots more tonight. Up next, all the news from where you live. Right, more news now. The Essex peer, Lord Hanningfield, will face trial over his expenses claims after a judge rejected his appeal today. The former leader of Essex County Council was appealing against an earlier ruling that parliamentary privilege didn't give him immunity from prosecution. He and three Labour MPs will now face trial on charges of false accounting. A five-year-old boy has been airlifted to hospital following a crash on the A120 near Colchester. It happened just before midday and involved a van and a car. The boy was taken to Addenbrooke's hospital in Cambridge with his mother, who was driving the car and suffered minor injuries. The driver of the van was unhurt. Police are appealing for witnesses. The trial has begun of a former head teacher accused of sexually abusing boys at schools in Norfolk and Suffolk during the 70s and 80s. Derek Slade, who's 61 and from Staffordshire, admits 19 charges but denies 14. Today, the jury at Ipswich Crown Court heard the prosecution's opening case in this three-week trial. Lorna Ramsey reports. Derek Slade arrived at Ipswich Crown Court this morning to face sexual abuse charges that go back nearly 30 years. The prosecution told the jury that beatings with canes, bats and slippers were commonplace at St George's boarding school under Slade's headship. The jury was told that in 1982 there was national media interest in the school on the basis that the regime there was too harsh. One TV documentary compared it to the school in the Charles Dickens novel Nicholas Nickleby which has a tyrant head teacher in it called Wackford Squeers. Anglia Television interviewed Slade in 1982. I believe in corporal punishment. I think it has a place in this school. I don't necessarily say it has a place in all schools. St George's School was a boarding school for boys whose parents were in the armed forces. It was originally set up at Wicklewood in Norfolk, but moved to this site at Great Fimber in Suffolk in 1980. The school is no longer in operation and has no connection with schools in those villages today. The jury was told Slade sexually assaulted boys after beatings and singled three boys out for serious sexual assaults. Many of the alleged victims got in touch with each other via the social networking site Facebook 
and a full investigation soon began. Slade admits 19 counts of indecent assault and assault, but denies 15 charges of indecent assault, assault and serious sexual assault on boys aged between 8 and 13. The trial is set to continue for three weeks. Lorna Ramsey, Anglian News, Ipswich. It's been reported that RAF Marham in Norfolk could close if proposed defence cuts are implemented. More than 3,500 people are employed at Marham, which is home to four squadrons of tornadoes. A leaked MOD document has concluded that retiring the tornado fleet could save more than £7 billion. Senior RAF officers say tough decisions are needed, but that current speculation is unfounded. Our team is a professional team, all the civilians, the contractors and service people here. They have been in similar situations before and uh, they won't actually respond to speculation in the newspaper. They will wait till the uh, command actually tells them what is going on. Shoppers are being warned to guard their purses and handbags after a spate of thefts in Norwich city centre. Police say older people in particular are being targeted by the thieves. They're still stressing that all shoppers need to be aware of the dangers of leaving purses and wallets on display. Southfold has been returning to normal after yesterday's dramatic events along the Suffolk seafront. Yeah, weren't they? Part of the town was cordoned off after the discovery of a Second World War mine. It was eventually blown up by experts from the Royal Navy, although they did need two attempts. Malcolm Robertson has the report. After yesterday's drama, Southfold was more than happy to revert to type. The seafront open again and people enjoying the unique atmosphere of this peaceful Suffolk town. What a difference a day makes. 24 hours earlier, the police were clearing the promenade and staff at Susie's Cafe were shutting up shop because of the unexploded mine discovered just a few yards away. As they made off in haste, Royal Navy divers were assessing the task in front of them. We're sitting just outside. Yes, I'll bring it out as soon as it's ready. Today, Susie's Cafe was back in business and making up for lost time. As exciting as yesterday's events were, actor Geoffrey Palmer was among the interested onlookers. Some found it a real headache. Holiday homes along the seafront had to be evacuated. It was certainly a challenging few hours for Rebecca Mayo, who manages the properties. Some of the people who were less mobile, um, it was a big problem and actually potentially quite a scary situation for them. Today, the Pierce family were catching up on the day's events. Sarah's 92, so having to leave quickly wasn't easy. They witnessed the first explosion. <laughs> We thought, good, we can go back in now. So we sort of tried to get back in. They said, <laughs> out you go again, they're doing another explosion. So we decided we'd go to the pub and have something to eat and drink. <laughs> they missed an altogether more dramatic second one. Thankfully, peace has been restored to Southwold. For all the fun of yesterday, they much prefer it the way it was today. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News, Suffolk. Don't blame them now. Football and Norwich City have been linked with a move for Greece's European Championship winning striker Angelos Karisteas. If he does join the Canaries, he may have to put up with a rather unusual seasonal problem. Fans have reported being plagued by bugs while wearing the club's bright and new shirt. Experts say they're confusing the tiny pollen beetles who are mistaking them for pollen.